Well, now let's talk about what we know about what happens to people who live near cell towers. Because contrary to what you may have heard from Duke Energy and others, there are studies showing that wireless radiation from cell towers can have biological effects. And I'm going to talk to you about two of those. And stay tuned for those of you who care about bees and trees and birds and bunnies. This section is for you. Studies have been done in India where, as you, those of you who may have been there know, it's a very crowded, crowded country. And they were able to evaluate the effect of radio frequency radiation from mobile phone base stations, towers like, and this is what you will see in many, many places near India. And you have a couple of them around here. If your tower is tall and away from people, that's a good thing. But in India, you don't have too many opportunities to do that. It's so dense. So what they were able to do was to compare people who lived within 80 meters, that's about 250 feet, to those who lived more than 300 meters, that's about 1,000 feet, away from towers. And remember, they had exposures that were lower, right, lower than many countries. And what they found was specific types of biochemical markers in the blood that we know predict cancer risk and show inflammation. They showed significant increases in those things in the blood of people who lived closer to cell phones. I won't bother going through the tongue twisting names of those for those of you who are not basic scientists. And I should have asked, by the way, how many of you in this audience are basic scientists or bio biologists, building biologists even? Oh, so I'm going to keep it very basic for what I'm talking about here then. These are markers of the health of a population, and they showed a statistically significant indication of damage in the blood. This is not just people saying, oh, I've got headaches or... This is only biochemical indicators of damage, and that's what they found. Now, my colleague in Australia, Malka Halgamug, is an expert in machine learning. It's a form of artificial intelligence, and she applied it to over 145 peer-reviewed studies on the topic of plants and RF. She found 145 peer-reviewed studies, so there is a literature. And she asked the machine, so to speak, to tell us what it found. So you, you put the data into the machine and it spits it out. Now, I wouldn't want to have my nuclear power plants designed this way, if at all. But it is an interesting analysis to carry out. And she showed significant impacts of radiation on plant stems and roots and leaves and uptake of nutrients, including nitrification and other measurements. Normally, you would think this would have been like a rifle shot around the world. But I need not tell this group here that very few people care about plants and trees. But those of us who do are deeply concerned about what this means. And I want to invite you to be part of my, I guess what's the crowds, crowdsourced scientific research. If you encounter a tower and nearby, within 10 or 20 feet, you see a tree without leaves on it, as you will find when you start looking, please take a picture of it, make a video of it with the date in indicated, and send it to info at ehtrust.org because we know this is existing, and I'm going to show you how we know in a moment. We also know that bees are affected by cell phone radiation. Now, research has been done in the past several years that has identified the cryptochrome. Crypto meaning hidden, and chrome meaning color. The cryptochrome is a small protein behind the eye of every, every, migrating animal, cryptochrome. Bees, ravens, 
other birds, bears, antelope, all migrating animals that have been studied have a cryptochrome. The cryptochrome is like an inboard GPS. It senses the Earth's magnetic field, and that is how animals navigate. And there's been some brilliant research on it where they put goggles on rock doves, goggles, so they were blind, and then release them. Now, these are the kind of birds that normally fly home, right? They released them, and they got home, although they couldn't see. And that was evidence that there was an inborn capacity for these animals to sense something in the Earth's magnetic field. And that capacity is being disrupted by some things nowadays. Watch this. New research from scientists at Punjab University in India claims microwave radiation from mobile phones could be part of the problem. Researchers fitted mobile phones to a hive and powered them up for two 15-minute periods each day. After three months, they found the bees stopped producing honey, egg production by the queen bee halved, and the size of the hive dramatically reduced. I spoke to an independent scientist in the UK about how the bees might have been affected. He pointed out that bees have a pigment called cryptochrome. Animals, including insects, use cryptochrome for navigation. They use it to sense the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. And its ability to do this is compromised by the radiation from mobile phones and their base stations. So basically, bees do not find their way back to the hive. Dr Goldsworthy has written to the UK communications regulator Ofcom suggesting they change the phone frequencies so bees won't be confused. And uh, you can imagine the response so far. Now, what about the trees? I want you to look at this. You see what I've circled there. If you look, the arrow is pointing to the towers, the cell towers, okay? And then the rotation is marking the part of the tree at the top where if you look carefully, you will see there are branches with no leaves. What the electromagnetic radiation is doing is killing the most proximate, most distant, parts of the tree, and eventually the whole tree will die. It starts on one side and extends eventually to the whole tree. That's what I want you guys to crowdsource. I can put up, I actually think, um, is anyone here knows how to work Instagram and all that jazz? I'd like to uh, invite you to help me do this because uh, I'm sure this is happening here. And you need towers that have been around for, what, uh, Dinah, maybe five years or so? We can find them. Now, this documentary is from a group called Investigate Europe, and it frankly speaks for itself. There's a revolution on the way. It's the 5G revolution. Although some say this will be more like an experiment that will affect billions of people. 5G stands for fifth generation mobile services. The internet will be faster than ever. Downloading a high definition movie will take mere seconds. By 2025, the European Commission is planning for all urban areas across the continent to have seamless 5G coverage. This will enable a new age in the internet of things. Smart driverless cars and smart hospitals, smart fridges, coffee makers, and even baby diapers. But what citizens are not told is that for this to happen, Countless new antennas will be added in our neighborhoods, our workplaces, even in our homes. Are mobile communications dangerous? The scientific community is divided. Some experts maintain they are safe, others have serious concerns. In 2011, the WHO classified electromagnetic fields associated with cell phones as possibly carcinogenic to humans. And studies published in 2018 showed that when rats were exposed to such fields, it increased their risk of certain types of cancer. Even among those who believe the technology is safe, many admit that more studies are needed. And for 5G, there are almost no studies. Telecom companies themselves have noted that electromagnetic signals may pose health risks. So why are the EU Commission and our governments turning a blind eye? 
they cite guidelines established by transnational scientific bodies. But Investigate Europe has found that these bodies are closed clubs, people with dissenting opinions are not invited in, and a significant number of the scientists involved have received funding from companies with vested interests in the 5G rollout. There is no risk-free society. Other things we consume are also bad for our health, from alcohol to junk food. But if you don't want a hamburger, you can simply avoid hamburgers. With 5G, there is no opt-out. And that's our dilemma, isn't it? That's the dilemma. This can be also found on our website as well. We go from the trees to the bugs as you know, there are over a thousand different insects that are critical to pollination. Without pollination, we have no agriculture. 5G radiation has been shown in a peer-reviewed publication to induce heating and disrupt behavior in insects. This is a very um, important study and it was done by a group of scientists who often work for industry. They made models of insect bodies and they showed that the wavelength of 5G, which is very, very small, resonates with the body of these insects. And you can see the difference in the 2G, 24G, 120G. And again, you see much greater exposure in the model for the 120G. On, on the right. And this is relatively recent research. And they say that this kind of absorption could lead to major changes in behavior as well as morphology over time. Now this is what 5G looks like. You may have seen it here yet. It's, it doesn't have to look like this, by the way. It doesn't have to look this ugly. So if you're in a wealthy community or a community where people know enough to make a fuss, they can disguise it. They can put it in the school mascot. They can put it in a very arty looking street lamp. Totally. But <clears throat> more important than all of this is that currently, currently, legislation is pending in the US Congress, sponsored by Senators Thune and Schatz, that says there can be no objection on any grounds at all to the sighting of 5G antenna anywhere, period. Schatz and Thune, bipartisan sponsorship, wants to make sure the federal government could do this and it's called the streamlining of 5G bill. Another component of it will be to transfer liability to the cities whose poles the 5G antennas are on. Liability is a huge problem for this industry. There will be up to 3 million new antennas installed in the United States to tie together the Internet of Things. The streamlining bills at the state level, as well as this federal bill I just told you about, are on the block. And it's up to you to organize letter rating campaigns to oppose this, these proposed legislation. Now, in case you need any other motivation, I want to share with you this video, and I'm curious to know how many of you have seen it before, that shows what the 5G system does when used as a weapon. These service personnel playing the role of an unruly mob at Georgia's Moody Air Force Base, are about to fall prey to an invisible ray. The hulking panel atop this Humvee is part of what the U.S. military calls the Active Denial System, or ADS. It's designed to incapacitate enemy combatants with an unnerving, non-lethal sensation of intense heat. Watch as the ray silently strikes and scatters the crowd. The active denial system has three great characteristics. First of all, it's safe. Second, it's effective. And third, it has a tremendous range compared to the other non-lethal weapons that today's warfighter has. This is the heart of this 100 kilowatt transmitter. This is the gyrotron. 
200 kilowatts of uh, electricity is fed in and 100 kilowatts of radio frequency comes out. That millimeter wave energy comes out an aperture underneath the main reflector, hits the subreflector, which illuminates that main reflector and sends a roughly antenna sized beam downrange. Those holes that you see in the antenna are for the cameras and other visual equipment that the operator uses so that he knows exactly where that beam is going. It's operated by a joystick. The operator looks into the console, sees exactly what that antenna is aimed at, moves the joystick left, antenna slews to the left, same way to the right. Then when there's an individual who's identified as a troublemaker, he has a cursor, he can put that cursor on that individual, pull the trigger that's on the joystick, and the energy is sent down range at the speed of light. The electromagnetic radiation released by the active denial system is similar to the microwaves in your microwave oven in that it causes the water molecules in the target to become excited and heat up. But that's where the similarity ends. The ADS is designed to heat only the very surface of the skin. It does this by outputting only the carefully chosen radio wave frequency of 95 gigahertz. Even though it can easily penetrate clothing, the ADS generates a much shorter and safer wavelength of radio waves than those used in microwave ovens. The active denial system millimeter wave directed energy beam reaches 1 64th of an inch into human skin. So that is the most outermost layer of the skin, roughly equivalent to about three sheets of notebook paper. It is essentially affecting the pain nerves in the outermost layer of the skin, heating them up and causing an immediate repel effect. Even these stoic servicemen, aware of what's about to happen, engage, can't help but flinch when they feel the heat. This is the first time I've experienced the uh, beam from the active denial system, and, and it uh, feels like an intense warmth feeling, uh, kind of similar to opening a uh, very hot oven door, and it's a compelling feeling that you want to get out of the way of this beam. If you were not expecting this, it would very definitely shock you and make you want to move. The ADS represents just the latest effort to devise an effective ray weapon. Well, I'm in favor of this, by the way. No, I am. I'd rather have this than bullets and bombs and killing people, but I really would rather not have it in my backyard. And the fact is, this is 95 gigahertz. Uh, the system they're talking about for our 5G now will be much less. But if, you're, if you realize that society needs weapons, you might as well try to make them non-lethal. Now, in fact, this would not be a non-lethal weapon. That is to say, it could kill some people because this is a very powerful thing. And a healthy crowd of who might be coming into the US Embassy, it might be a much better way to disperse a crowd than the techniques that we have used in the past. I recognize the need for national security and safety. So it's not that it's a bad idea per se for there to be weapons. But I don't want those weapons at my bedroom window. And I think that the prospect that 5G could become something other than a system of communication is very worrisome for many of us. Particularly in light of the fact that Harvard University published a study now about eight years ago in which it concluded that the FCC is a captured agency and concluded that consumer safety, health, and privacy have all been overlooked and sacrificed due to the unchecked industry influence, part of which was shown in that video from Investigate Europe. Again, this report came out and nothing changed. Things will only change when more of you get involved on this issue, get informed on this issue, and work to see that those in Congress understand that it's the game is over. No more are we going to let the industry decide what is safe when it comes to the technology that we're being exposed to, that our children and grandchildren are being exposed to. And certainly, given the proposal to expose people from space, I think many of us are very concerned about that. The U.S. today has among the highest allowable exposure limits in the world. Take a look. Japan, the United States, Canada, and way down there you've got China, Poland, Italy, Belgium. Exposures are much, much lower. 
Why? I can't answer that question except to say that for the past 30 years, there's been a revolving door between the FCC and the telecom industry. The current head, the current chairman of the FCC, a very smart man named Ajit Pai, for years worked for the cell phone industry. Under the Obama administration, the head of the FCC, another really smart guy named Tom Wheeler, formerly ran the Cell Phone Industry Association for 10 years. And there's no, there's no pretense. There's no pretense whatsoever. So that revolving door, I think, is part of the problem. Now, we know there's a problem because not only do I, did I show you the science, but now let's take a look at what the companies are telling their shareholders in their 10-K forms. The 10-K is the form companies have to file every year to the SEC, that's the Securities and Exchange Commission, to acknowledge what liabilities they face. And this is what they say for Crown Castle. We currently do not maintain any insurance with respect to health effects of wireless radiation. Verizon says, we may incur significant expenses in defending these lawsuits. In addition, we may be required to pay significant awards or settlements. That's what they're telling their shareholders. But you don't know that.